after the resurrection of our lord jesus christ this was recorded in the book of john chapter 14 i read from verse 12 say verily verily i say unto you he that believeth on me the works that i do shall he do also and greater works than these shall he do because i go unto my father verse 13 and whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. 14. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. 15. If ye love me, keep my commandments. Let us pray. Our precious daddy Lord, we just thank you for such a time as this. I give you all the praise. I give you all the honor. Father, O oh God in heaven, verify your word today. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' most wonderful name. Amen. The Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, after his resurrection, before his ascension, he said this clearly to his disciples, which he's saying to us today. He said, if you love me, keep my commandment. Because the commandment of the Lord is not grievous. Praise God. In the book of 1 John chapter 5 verse 3, I read. It said, for this is the love of God that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not grievous. Praise God. The commandment of the Lord is not grievous. For us to keep God's commandment is to love God. For everything to work together for our good, we must love God. We must keep his commandment. His commandments are his principles. His commandments are to guide us, not to hell against God. That is why the Lord Jesus Christ told his disciples, he said, if you love me, keep my commandment because he is God. Hallelujah. The only thing that will enable us to serve God in spirit and in truth is to keep the father's commandments our father god the one that created us the one that created the universe the one that created us in his own likeness and in his own image for us to be a better christian for us to do greater exploit for the lord for the kingdom which the lord created us for the lord created us for himself the lord created us to worship him the Lord created us to serve him. The Lord created us to do the things that the Lord Jesus Christ has left for us. When he was going, he commissioned the people that they should go into the world and preach the gospel. Once you give your life to Jesus, you become the disciples of the Lord Jesus. You are to function. You are to populate the kingdom of God through evangelism. Through speaking the word of God to people around you. It's so sad today. When you see a Christian, you can't even differentiate a born again Christian for ordinary Christian. You can't even differentiate a Christian from pagans. It's so sad. Many cannot go out there today. I'm not trying to condemn anybody to, to proclaim the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Some are ashamed to even say I'm a born again Christian because what they do and what people see around them that they do don't even portray what they claim to be. It's so sad. And the Lord Jesus Christ says, say, Very, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also. Anyone that believes in the Lord Jesus Christ will do what the Lord Jesus Christ has done. Hallelujah. And he said, and greater works than these shall he do because I go unto my father. This is a great commission. Because he's going, he's not, he's not here with us. His spirit is here with us. We do what he wants us to do through the leading of his spirit. He said, greater work we will do. The Lord told me this year that we will do greater exploit. For us to do greater exploit, we have to allow the Holy Spirit to take charge over our lives. I can't stop emphasizing on this. The Holy Spirit is there to teach us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Hallelujah. In verse 13, say, and, 
and whatsoever ye shall ask in my name that I will do that the Father may be glorified in the Son. That is when we can come to the Father and begin to place a demand on Him and begin to ask Him. Some of us, we are asking God what you don't even merit. I know favor brings what we don't merit into our life. It doesn't just work like that, like we say it in our mouth. Because everything that God does starts from the Spirit. Your spirit has to be right in the presence of God. When our life does not bring glory to God, and we are asking that which that is glorified by God, how do we think God can release it into our life? I'm not preaching this message to bring condemnation to us. I'm just bringing in that we will we'll come together with the Lord to reason with him. Like a child will reason with the parents. Maybe a child that is asking what, for what he does not merit as a parent. Put yourself in this position as a parent. A child is asking for what he or she does not merit. They have to merit what they are demanding from you. So look at our Father God, who sent His only begotten Son to this sinful world to die for us. He's talking to us, He's telling us that if we ask anything in His name, that He would do it so that in the name of His Father will be glorified. This scripture personalizes it that the Lord Jesus Christ is speaking to you today. He said, if, if you shall ask anything in my name i will do it in verse 13 look at what jesus christ said to his disciples which is saying to us today say whatsoever ye shall ask in my name that will i do that the father may be glorified in the son why did jesus christ say this to us because he was obedient to his father so whatever he asked his father he will do so if you ask, if we ask anything in the name of Jesus, why would God respond? Because he was obedient to him while he was here on earth. That is why Jesus had that boldness to speak that word to the disciples like he's speaking to us today. So if we are obedient, if we are obedient to his principle, if we are obedient to the word of God, when we ask anything through Jesus because he was obedient to his father and we are obedient to his ordinances. So when we ask anything in his name, he gave it to us. Not for anything, for the, for the father may be glorified in his son so that God will be happy that we, we are obedient to his son. That we understand what he came to do for us. In verse 14, say, if ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. It's repeatedly. If you ask anything in his name, in the name of Jesus, that name that is above every other name, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, that sacrifice himself so that whatsoever we ask in his name, the Father will do it through his son. He went furthermore to say, if you love me, keep my commandments. He has instructed us. If we know we love Jesus, we should keep his word. All that he said when he was here on earth, we should keep it. We should run with it. No matter what, we should keep his word, his principle. We should not pick and choose if we want all things to work together for our good first john chapter 5 verse 3 has told us that the commandments the commandment of our father god can be kept through love so if we love our father we appreciate all that he has done for us true love we came to accept him True love, we should worship him. True love, we should obey his commandment. I pray that the Holy Spirit will expand this word in your hearts and you will give glory to God in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Please, brothers and sisters, 
you have listened to this message and you are not yet born again and you say prophetess i want to give my life to jesus i want you to please confess this after me say lord jesus i recognize i'm a sinner forgive me my sin today i accept you as my lord and personal savior be my master in jesus name Amen. God bless you. Is your sister prophetess, Mrs. Rosalind Owaifu, of New Life in Christ Evangelical Ministry, the New Jerusalem, Manchester. God bless you. Amen. Amen.